Afternoon, everybody. My name is Simone Watzel from the TU Munich. And I will guide you through room 11's program this afternoon. So our first speaker is Suku Shin uh, from UC Berkeley. Suku Shin graduated in 2007 uh, and had employments from MIT, the IES in Princeton, and then later moved uh, to his current location at Berkeley. And today he's gonna talk about um, works on the Landlands program. And the to topic of the recorded talk is points on Shimura varieties modulo primes. The first speaker of uh, this afternoon is Professor uh, Sogu uh, Singh uh, from Berkeley. So Professor Singh uh, got a uh, PhD at Harvard, uh, supervised by uh, Richard Taylor on counting points on Igusa varieties. Then uh, he uh, worked for Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton uh, University of Chicago and uh, MIT uh, before he got, uh, um, he moved to uh, Berkeley 2014. So please. Okay, well, thank you for the introduction and I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me here to speak. Uh, I'm extremely honored to give this talk and also pleased to give this talk in front of live audience. And also at this location, I am at Singapore, which is one of my most favorite destinations for math conferences. And also like to thank my collaborators and math friends. Many of them are here and well, I learned tons of mathematics from them and I wouldn't have accomplished anything without their friendship and uh, all the collaboration over the years. Okay, so let me get into my talk. The title is Points on Shimura Varieties, Modular Primes. And here's my plan. Uh, first, I'll take you from some classical Hilbert problems to the so-called langlands rapoport conjecture, which is about Shimura Varieties, Modular Primes, as in the title. And in the second part, I'll get into more details of this conjecture and discuss some results. And my, uh, well, my, <laughs> there's this survey article I have written for the ICM proceedings, which is available at my website. Okay, so here we go. So our starting point is Hilbert's 12th problem. Most of you may be familiar with this. Well, the problem is to give a family of special functions and their values generating maximal abelian extensions of a number field. So, well, if we think about this over Q, then that's the classical kronecker weber theorem telling you that maximal abelian extensions of Q, I mean, the maximal abelian extension of Q is generated by roots of unity. And roots of unity can be thought of as special values of the exponential function. So the special function in the problem is the exponential function in this case. And more in strength, in, interestingly, in the case where the base field is an imaginary quadratic field, well, that's kronecker eugentraum and was established by Kronecker-Weber and, well, Takagi and Hasse in this case. And the special functions are, in this case, modular J function and some elliptic functions. And this problem motivated Shimura and Langlands to go further. And actually, I'm not going to talk about this problem too much, the 12th problem, but how it had an interesting twist and turn to lead us to in another direction. So I'll get to that. But before that, I'll let me quickly mention that this problem is still widely open, but there's some fantastic recent progress by Das Gupta and Kakte, and they prove a version of this theorem over total, total real field. 
that's not the focus of my talk, but I'll quote from Shimura. I mean, he thought about this earlier than 1968, but I'm just quoting from his written account. And he says, well, to, for a generalization, we want to be introduced to automorphic functions and abelian varieties. So let's see. That's my, what I'd like to discuss next. By the way, you sh please feel free to interrupt me any, at any time. Um, okay, so, so our starting point is this uh, kronecker Jugendtraum and Hilbert's 12th problem. And there are two aspects. Namely, one aspect is, well, you need a good supply of special functions. These are uh, the modular J function and some elliptic functions in the uh, classical case. And in general, you want to understand a good supply of these functions, for instance, automorphic functions and automorphic forms. Um, that's one thing you want to understand. And another thing is that over imaginary quadratic fields, what has what was extremely successful was to study elliptic curves with extra symmetries, namely elliptic curves with complex multiplication by a given imaginary quadratic field. So that's called a CM theory for elliptic curves, uh, developed by Hasse and Doering and other people. So to go further than imaginary quadratic fields, now you want to go to higher dimensional analogs, and these are called CM abelian varieties or abelian varieties with complex multiplication. Abelian varieties are projective algebraic varieties with commutative group structure. And these were extensively studied by Shimura and Tanyama. So now, well, where, where do we go from there? Well, Shimura basically combined the two threads to come up with a good theory of Shimura varieties. Well, it wasn't named by himself, but uh, he got this theory of canonical model for Shimura varieties, where canonical models, well, I'm not going to give you a precise definition, but it's, for one thing, Shimura varieties are a priori complex manifolds, so they're defined over C, and you can even show that they are algebraic varieties over C, but then you can show that they are actually naturally defined over certain number fields. And to really characterize canonical models, you need to think about some automorphisms of C acting on points of certain points of Shimura varieties. But um, he got this theory, and well, here this both automorphic forms, automorphic functions, and CM theory for abelian varieties play an important role. Okay. So. Um, before going further, for people who haven't seen Shimura varieties much, I'd like to give you at least two examples you can think of when following my talk. So the, uh, one of the most basic examples is modular curves. So these are, well, moduli theoretically, this is the moduli space of elliptic curves with additional structures such as um, n torsion point. Order or an order endpoint on the elliptic curve. So you try to parameterize an elliptic curve together with some additional data like that. And this moduli space is representable by a quasi projective curve if you put enough additional structure and define over Q. So not just over C. So that's the, uh, what an algebraic theory can give you. Of course, analytically, you can also think of this as, well, the complex points of this moduli space, well, is something you're familiar with, namely, well, forgetting the additional structure, just for simplicity, then it's essentially the Poincaré of four plane modular the linear fractional action of SL to Z. And the isomorphism is just given by sending a point in the upper half plane to the complex torus given by the lattice generated by one and tau. And also this, in this case, it's also isomorphic to the affine line over C, given the isomorphism being given by the uh, modular J function. So that's what it looks like. And of course, if you put more and more additional structure, then you're going to get a modular curve of higher and higher genus. So in general, it looks quite complicated. 
And the, in higher dimensions, you have Ziegel modular varieties. Uh, that's the pictures of Ziegel and Mumford, who studied these varieties. Um, and in this case, you consider the moduli space of polarized abelian varieties of dimension G. And that way, you get a quasi, well, if you put additional structures, then you get a quasi projective variety over Q of dimension G times G plus one over two. And when G is one, of course, you recover modular curves. So these are some Shimura varieties you want to keep in mind. And to relate back to Shimura's uh, notion of canonical models, well, these modular varieties, you have to check, but you, these modular varieties turn out to be canonical models over Q in Shimura's sense. Well, as they have to be. Okay, so now that we have seen some Shimura varieties, now I'd like to recall some problems Shimura proposed at the ICM 1966. And well, essentially he asks the following questions. The first is to construct canonical models of Shimura varieties over a number of fields. And well, he phrased this problem in terms of uh, permission symmetric domains modulo some arithmetic group action. But these are essentially what we call Shimura varieties nowadays. And he wants us to construct uh, canonical models over number fields in a suitable sense. And then once you have an algebraic variety over a number field, you can think of the Hasse-Vey zeta function of the given algebraic variety. In this case, we are looking at Shimura varieties and you want to relate the zeta functions of Shimura varieties to the Hackagen values for automorphic forms on the group defining Shimura variety. So, well, here I'm pretty, being pretty loose, but if you're familiar with automorphic representations, then essentially we are talking about stock parameters at almost all places. And in the classical context of modular forms, you want to think of the TP eigenvalue and SP eigenvalue of your modular form. Okay, so is there any connection? Well, he didn't quite give a precise recipe, but he did prove the following on the equality of the following shape, namely the zeta function of the Shimura variety is equal to the pro product of the L functions of suitable eigenforms, uh, modulus some Riemann zeta vectors, and up to sine, or modular curves and Shimura curves. But then the, uh, the question still stands. In general, you get higher dimensional Shimura varieties, and what can you say? So there are some answers we know in response to these questions. Well, for the question of constructing canonical models, well, Deligne gave an answer for a pretty general class of Shimura varieties called abelian type Shimura varieties that was done in 1970s. And then for arbitrary Shimura varieties, it was due to Borovoy and Mill. And for the second question, that's more complicated. And in the early days, in 1970s, starting in 1970s, Langlands proposed and developed a program, and that will be the next topic. Okay, so before going into that problem, let me now mention Hilbert's ninth problem. Previously, we talked about the twelfth problem. This one is about finding the most general reciprocity law over every number field, or if you like, over every global field, including global function field. And whatever we mean by that, this should generalize the well-known quadratic reciprocity and also the ordinary reciprocity as part of cloth field theory. And well, these days we have some general conjectures due to Langlands, which started in his letter to, famous letter to André Vey in 1967. And now I'm citing what Tate wrote in these proceedings. Uh, there was a conference in 1970 uh, on Hilbert problems 
they went through all the problems by Hilbert and then uh, discussed the recent progress and what we know about these problems. And in Tate's report, uh, in later part of his report, he mentions these conjectures by Lennon. So basically, these days, although this may not be the only possible generalization, Langland's conjectures, reciprocity and functionality conjectures are regarded as pretty reasonable candidate for the answer to this problem. So the, the so-called Langland's reciprocity might be the answer we may be looking for. But then now let me go back to Hilbert's 12th problem because at the same conference, Langlands wrote a report on Hilbert's 12th problem. Uh, let's see what he did. So his title was Some Contemporary Problems with Origins in the Jugendtraum. Of course, we are talking about Hilbert's, uh, Kronecker's Jugendtraum. Um, and although there's this, so that's about general, generating maximal abelian extensions over number fields. A lot of the article is about Shimura varieties. Well, why is that? But it, I'm now copying what he wrote in this article. And he's saying that the L functions of Shimura varieties should be expressed in terms of the L functions of automorphic forms or automorphic repetitions. And Langdon himself gave a pretty general recipe for automorphic L functions. So now we can talk about these automorphic L functions uh, on one side of the equality. And uh, these automorphic forms of representations live on the group defining the Shimura variety, but also on some certain related groups. That's a in very interesting observation, which was definitely not in Shimura's original problem in the way he proposed. So, well, a lot of experts probably know <laughs> what we mean by that. Uh, these are what we call endoscopic groups nowadays. And actually, endoscopic groups arose in the context of Shimura varieties in the first place. So, so Langdon's basically made this problem more precise. And indeed, well, over many years in 1970s and 80s, Langdon's made it more and more precise how to attack this problem. But let me mention at this point that this investigation, which has its, at least some of its roots are in Hilbert's 12th problem, but by trying to solve this, even a partial solution to this problem led to many new instances of the Langdon's reciprocity, which is Hilbert's ninth problem. So there's a very close connection between the two problems indeed. But then let me now go back to and just concentrate on this problem, how to relate the L functions or zeta functions of Shimura varieties and on the one hand and the L functions of automorphic forms on the other hand. So this, as I said, has been done by Langdon's and also together with Kotwitz and Rappaport and other experts. Basically they were after this equality of this form namely the Hasev A zeta function is equal to a certain alternating product of automorphic L functions. Now I'm making it slightly more precise. And here, well, this is the Langlands L function and pi is an automorphic representation on some group H. So in the context of Shimura varieties, there's always an connective reductive group over Q that goes into the definition of Shimura varieties. So there's, let's call it a group G. Then these groups are endoscopic groups of your group G, as I said earlier. And then there's a little r, which you need to define an automorphic L function is some representation of the L group, which you can figure out from the context. And then A, well, I'm gonna say, it, and very soon, but it has to do with automorphic multiplicity and other issues. Okay, so let's make it more precise. Actually, Langdon himself 
singled out three important matters to attack this problem. So the first is uh, you want to understand the structure of mod p points on your Shimura varieties. Well, why? Because the Hasse zeta function is the product over almost all primes of the number of points of Shimura varieties over finite field. So definitely you want to understand mod p points of your Shimura varieties modulate different primes. And, but then to relate to automorphic L functions, what you need to do is you don't on, you not only count the number of points over finite fields, but you also want to understand the so-called hack action on the mod p points of Shimura varieties so that you can somehow try to show something about the relationship between the number of points and the hack action. So basically, Shimura varieties always come with some extra symmetries, and you want to understand these extra symmetries, and they are actually closely related to automorphic forms. So the understanding the structure of multiple points basically is what the langlands rappaport conjecture is about, and I'll get to, get to that later in my talk. So that's one matter. And the second matter is, well, which pi R and A occur on the right-hand side? You want to have some sort of recipe or a conjectural recipe. And that leads to the so-called L indistinguishability in the early days and nowadays also known as endoscopy. And that includes Arthur's conjectural multiplicity formula, which was formulated somewhat later. And the third uh, matter is to analyze, well, once you understand the structure of multiple points, what do you do with that? And basically, you want to relate that to the automorphic trace formula due to Arthur Selberg, because uh, the Arthur Selberg trace formula is all about automorphic representations. And well, to do that, well, you need to make some combinatorial arguments. Well you need to somehow organize point, and count, point counting argument, but also you need to stabilize the trace formula. And there's an important thing you need to prove, the so-called the fundamental lemma, which was proven, proven much later by Vals, Pedro, and other people. Um, and of course, the fundamental lemma, as we now we know the proof, so it, it appears combinatorial, but its proof requires some hard L-direct geometry, but still, um, at the time, people thought of this as combinatorial argument. So these are the important matters. And you can put them together in the following way, in the following oversimplified diagram. Well, you start from this Langland Rappaport conjecture. Again, it's about mod P points. And you apply the left just type fixed point formula. And then massage the formula quite a bit to arrive at the trace formula for Shimura varieties that basically computes the trace of Frobenius and Hacke action on the homology of Shimura varieties in terms of certain linear combination of orbital integrals that looks like the geometric side of the Arthur Selva trace formula. And then now you try to understand these automorphic matters and some combinatorial matters to relate that to automorphic forms. And at the end of the day, you want to express your answer, namely the has a zeta function in terms of automorphic data as on the right hand side. So that's basically the rough outline of the what I call Langlands Cardwitz Rappaport method. And now, but you need to understand the very first part, otherwise, you cannot get started. So let's concentrate on the first part the Langland Rappaport conjecture. So, so that was proposed in their paper in 1987. And the, I didn't quite discuss this yet, but of course, to talk about Shimura varieties modular prime, Shimura varieties are a priori defined over number fields, but to talk about uh, modulo P, you need to have an integral model. Uh, and you want, you don't want to work with arbitrary integral models, then, you know, the 
special fibers may look, may change quite a bit from models to models. So you want to have some natural or canonical models uh, over some p integer ring, which you can take modulo p. Okay, so um, if you come up with a reasonable notion of canon integral canonical models, then there should exist a unique such model. Uh, although they, they didn't quite make this extremely precise, so that requires some refinement. Uh, but there's some reasonable integral model. And once you have that, then now we talk about the structure of mod P points. And here, it's given very precisely the FP bar points of your Schumer variety, or the integral model, is in bijection with some complicated looking expression, in a way, compatible with the Frobenius and Hack action, namely, the Schumer variety has natural Frobenius and Hack action, basically by construction. But then, on the right hand side, you have you write down a certain expression on which you can write down the Frobenius and Hack action, and then the claim is that there is an equivariant bijection. So when you try to run through the Langlands cut with Rapoport method, then you can replace the left hand side with the right hand side, and then starting from there, you can make the argument. So that's an important step in this method. But then, admittedly, the right-hand side looks quite complicated, so I'm not now going to explain to you how to think of the right-hand side. I mean, some notations are not even defined, so let me say something about that. Well, if, you, if I give you the precise definition, then it wouldn't help too much, so I'll uh, make analogy with the geometric side and I would rather tell you what things on the right-hand side should correspond to in the geometric side. And let's do this in the case of Ziegel modular varieties of genus G, namely mod the moduli space of polarized abelian varieties of dimension G. So first, uh, there's this partition or a disjoint union over bracket phi. And the bracket phi sh should correspond to an isogenic class of polarized abelian varieties of dimension G. Here, the notion of isogeny should be also compatible with the polarization. So that's an isogeny class. Um, and of course, you have like a bunch of abelian varieties, then you can just partition according to this isogeny classes, because two things being isogenous is an equivalence relation. And, and in the sum end, well, x lower p is well, how do you how do you try to parameterize? Now you partition into isogenic classes, and now you what you have to do is to parameterize all these polarized abelian varieties in a fixed isogenic class. So the way you do it is you fix a base point, and then all the other things are isogenous to the base point. So well, you try to parameterize all the other polarized abelian varieties in the same isogenic class relative to the base point, base polarized abelian variety. So you can go from the fixed one to other ones by either p power isogenies or prime to p degree isogenies, or maybe together. So that gives you x lower p and x upper p, p power isogeny and prime to p degree isogenies. But then when you do that, you need to mod out by some redundancy. And the redundancy is basically given by the automorphism group, which is I phi of Q. So roughly, that's how it works. So you partition into isogenic classes and then parameterize all the others in the uh, fixed isogenic class relative to a fixed base point. And as I said, why, why do we do this? Well, there are two points. The first is that here, these Frobenius hack actions are kind of mixed up, and it's a little, little hard to see these actions, whereas on the right-hand side, the Frobenius action is concentrated on this p factor, and the hack action is concentrated on the away from p factor. And also, the right-hand side is, although I try to explain 
what these things correspond to, uh, the right-hand side is purely group theoretic, and there's no reference to abelian varieties. And this kind of process sh should be necessary because we want to go from there to make a comparison with the automorphic trace formula. And, on, and the automorphic trace formula doesn't know anything about abelian varieties. They only see some group theoretic information. So it's nice to convert this kind of set uh, into the more manageable set for our purpose in the langlands cartwright rapport method. But again, this is a complicated statement, so let me make it more explicit in the classical case of Eugentraum. Well, so in this case, we are looking at really uh, dimension zero Shimura variety, which looks somewhat simple. So in this case, the, our Shimura variety is just the uh, moduli space of elliptical curves with complex multiplication by the given imaginary quadratic field. So it's zero dimensional, it's just a bunch of points. Uh. And when you do this with additional structures or level structures, then the FP bar points are in bijection with this sort of expression. And I colored this carefully so that P part and away from P part and the automorphism group part match with the expression above. And basically what you're looking at is a certain quotient of the Edel class group. So this is some sort of class group. Well, or a limit of class groups. And well, what do we see in this bijection? Well, first of all, you can parameterize the elliptic curve with complex multiplication in terms of something more familiar, as you may often encounter in class field theory, and this is no coincidence. Well, in this case, the lambda drop over conjecture amounts to class field theory and complex multiplication theory over imaginary quadratic field. And the Frobenius action here should correspond to some easy action on the P part. Well, this part is isomorphic to the abelian group Z, and Frobenius action should just correspond to some translation action. So really, we are making things more understandable by going to the right-hand side. And the next is the one-dimensional case of modular curves. So in these two examples, the langlands rapport conjecture is known. These are simple enough. And remember that the modular curve is a modernized space of elliptic curves with some additional structure. And here, I'm not going to really explain the proof, but I just just mention one important idea, which is that uh, in this case, we can really pr probe the points of modular curves by using lots of zero-dimensional sub-varieties, sub shimura varieties. Uh, well, where does this come from? Well, S in this case is the modular space of all elliptic curves, whereas SF is elliptic curves with complex multiplication. So there's an obvious embedding. Um, and in terms of the analytic coordinates, so the modular curves can be thought of as the upper half plane modular some congruent subgroup action. So there, basically, uh, the image of SF corresponds to those complex numbers in the upper half plane generating the imaginary quadratic field F. So there, and as you vary the imaginary quadratic field, you get lots and lots of those points. You get lots and lots of complex numbers generating imaginary quadri different imaginary quadratic fields, and you can somehow use them uh, together with this theory of uh, complex multiplication to study points of modular curves. And this kind of idea can be generalized quite a bit. And in the context of Shimura varieties of Hodge type or even of abelian type. Um, this is one of the essential ideas or a key principle. And technically, I, we can say that um, every isogeny class contains the mod p reduction of CM points corresponding to CM abelian varieties. But if that sounds too complicated, then basically I'm saying that there are 
many, many points at which we can understand what's going on. And, and this information comes from, essentially comes from some complex multiplication theory and some sort of Honda Tate theory telling you that a lot of mod P points come from um, characteristic zero points corresponding to CM abelian varieties. And that gives us a, a grip on the mod P points of Shimura varieties. So now, after mentioning this idea, I'd like to tell you what is known about this conjecture. So for obedient type Shimura varieties, and in the case of at primes of good reduction, and let me not give you the precise definition of abelian type, but basically this is the case where you can essentially reduce the study of points of Shimura varieties to in the study of modulized space of abelian varieties, polarized abelian varieties. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty general class of Shimura varieties. And for, as for the construction of integral canonical models, this was done by Kissin and Madapuzi Para Kim. Uh, it's relatively recent. And then on the second question, well, to prove this Forbidden's hack equivariant bijection, Kissin proved in his 2017 paper a weaker version of this. And by a weaker version, I mean that well, on the right-hand side, you're seeing this kind of quotient, and it's not exactly the quotient as in the conjecture, but there's some ambiguity for defining this action. So his, Kissin's quotient may differ from the quotient by the actual action. So I'll say something more about this ambiguity, but basically he's proved, he proved a weaker version with some ambiguity remaining. But then to put this in the context of the langlands cartridge rapport method, well, what we want to do ideally is to prove the langlands rapport conjecture and then get some trace formula computing the cohomology of Shimura varieties and then now we arrive at what we want, namely the zeta function or cohomology of Shimura varieties together with Galois and Heck action. But then, well, the langlands rapport conjecture is widely open even in the case of Ziegel modular varieties of genus greater than one. But then Kiss improved the fantastic result, but somehow we don't see how to go from there to obtain the trace formula for Shimura varieties in the form we want. So we, we're kind of stuck. So that's the, that was the situation when Kiss improved this result. Seems like we are very close, but we couldn't quite finish. But then now, there's this recent result. Uh, that's Kissin and Yi Hang Zhu. And in 2021 paper, we proved the uh, following theorem. Again, for the case of abelian type Shimura varieties and at primes of good reduction, for experts, I mean that the level subgroup at P is hyperspecial. Uh, the Langlands rapport conjecture holds true modulo less ambiguity. Doesn't sound like a uh, convincing result, but is, compared to Kissin's previous result, we reduced the amount of ambiguity. Uh, so we, our result is more precise, but the point is that now this version is enough to imply the desired trace formula for Shimura varieties, and then we can actually go on to the next step. So what I mean by that is now the problem in the context of the LKR method, we are basically done with the Shimura variety part and all the remaining issue is automorphic. And as far as we understand, some classification results for automorphic representations appearing in the problem, then we have the answer. So, so in terms of a diagram, well, what I mean is that, well, previously we were stuck either starting from here or here, but now this version will allow you to go to the next step and then, well, 
this part is still work in progress. That's equal to the first paper, and we are working out several interesting examples, um, starting from this starting from this theorem to obtain results on zeta functions and, and the analytic cohomology of Shimura varieties. And in particular, this will uh, answer the answer Shimura's second problem. And if I want to mention one thing, then as you can imagine, well, we need to make something more precise. And I told you about the idea of probing points of mod, mod p points of Shimura varieties uh, by understanding those points corresponding to mod p reduction of CM abelian varieties. So CM theory is always essential, but then you want to do more with it together with some integral periodic Hodge theory and other things. So you keep track of data somehow, somehow more precisely. That's probably a, too, a bit too vague, but telling, pointing out one important ingredient. But then, well, to say a bit more, because I don't want to spend too much time on this most technical part of my talk. So I'll just mention that what, what's the nature of this conjecture? Well, on the one hand, you have mod p points of Shimura varieties. This is about geometry, right? Geometry of some moduli space. And on the, on the other side, you have a purely group theoretic information. This is really has nothing to do with obedient varieties or any geometric data a priori. So you, so it's difficult to make a connection between the two some group theory and algebraic geometry. And the connection comes from CM theory, namely these special point data correspond to those special points on Shimura varieties corresponding to abelian varieties with complex multiplication. But then special point data have both aspects. It, they have both group theoretic aspects and algebraic geometry aspect thanks to the CM theory for abelian varieties. And you can, Starting from there, you can actually make relation to both parts. So that's what I mean by probing by using CM theory. You, because CM theory allows you to access both, but then you cannot access the entire Shimura varieties. Also, a priori, you don't remember all the information you like to remember in this process. So that poses some difficulty. I mean, it tells you some information, but the problem is how much information can you really retain along these processes. So I'll just mention that uh, in the original work by Kissin, when I, met, when I said he proved a weak version of the LR conjecture, the ambiguity is actually measured by some adelic Galois cohomology class. So, and that somehow wasn't enough for us to conclude or to obtain the desired trace formula. But then in the new paper, after all this hard work, what he, do, what he managed to prove is that this error, this Galois cohomology class measuring the error is rational. It's uh, Q-rational Galois cohomology class rather than Adelic uh, Galois cohomology class. So that's smaller enough, sufficiently small that that doesn't affect the counting argument. and it allows us to prove the desired formula. So that's all I would say about this proof. And let me end with some comments. So, uh, so I, met, I discussed the LKR method and the LR conjecture for Shimura varieties with good reduction or uh, with hyperspecial level subgroups at P, at the prime P where we are reducing. Uh, you can certainly think about bad reduction because you eventually you want to understand uh, your problem at all primes, not at almost all primes. So what happens in the case of bad reduction, there are at least three approaches uh, due to various people like Harris Taylor and Montavan, and then Hans Kotwitz Rappaport, and also another one by Schulze. Uh, in his old work, uh, which has also led him to 
give a new proof of the local lambda's conjecture for GLN. And in these cases, well, there is some fantastic recent progress by various people. Cannot really read read them out, but it, and obviously I probably missed some important names. So sorry for that. And that's one thing. The bad the issue with bad reduction to understand the Galois action or the Hasse-V zeta factors at all primes. And another thing is that there's an analogous situation for the so-called Igusa varieties, which are closely related to Shimura varieties modular primes. I'm not going to exactly explain what they are, but there are some interesting Eldred varieties related to Shimura varieties where a similar method applies, but then you need to really adapt the LKR method to understand their cohomology. And well, you want to do this because it, it is closely related to the bad reduction, uh, the approach to bad reduction due to Harris, Taylor, Mantovan, but also there are other applications. And, and there's some work done by myself and other people in this direction as well. So just want to mention them. And that's pretty much the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Okay, um, thank you very much uh, for this very nice talk. And unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, uh, but Suk Wu Shin um, is available uh, by email. And if you have any question, please feel free.